Cheers, everybody. Next we month. are back for another edition of Bourbon on a Budget. I'm not editing that out because Ben. I didn't think we were cannot... recording. <laughs> control myself. Right? Yeah, can't control Excited. himself. TJ Pittenger, Ben Cog, and Brendan Sinone. It's review time. Like we told you on Tuesday's episode, Monday night's episode, if you watched it live. live. We are reviewing Chattanooga Whiskey, the 111 proof. Mm. Exciting times over here as mm. we dive into mm. this. Brendan, tell us yes. about Chattanooga Whiskey 111. Chattanooga Whiskey. It's funny. You say 111. In my mind, I see 111, but I guess 111 makes sense because it is proofed at 111. 100. I see 11 to 1. Oh, oh. Wow. Or 111. Oh, wait, did yeah, I already say that? 11. That's what I said. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Don't you say 247 or did you say 24 7? 24 7. Oh, don't. Two, four, hey, it's 247. Let, let me tell you something. There's some people <laughs> okay. in the company you do not say 247. They get very uh, aggravated with branding. But, anyways, uh, I, I digress. What uh, what upsets them more by saying 247? Talking about two, four, sports seven. on a bourbon podcast. That's what I saw them really most. The classification for this Chattanooga whiskey. One 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 eleven eleven one. I I wish I was joking with that. I just keep saying one 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 in my mind. Uh, it's a straight bourbon. It mm -hmm. is the it is distilled at Chattanooga whiskey, which we obviously have already gone in depth with. This is aged at least two years. Again, proofed at a one hundred eleven proof. The mash bill is yellow corn, malted mm -hmm. rye, and here's where it gets interesting, mm -hmm. fellas. And I think this helps a lot with the aging process. It is caramel malted barley and honey malted barley mm. kind of change the, the flavor profile and pat will you know has explained that to us already i think that helps out a ton the msrp for this guys is 45 dollars. i would say this is pretty available uh their their lower proof one what's it at 93 91 91 um, 91 that's that's more readily available up by me but you can you don't have to look that hard in tallahassee to find the 111 and uh, i know that's readily available by you guys as well mm -hmm. That's all. So, all right, well, let's roll into this. Um, ben, have you been nosing a little bit while Brendan's been talking about 11-1 Chattanooga whiskey? Stop, you're hurting my brain. Yes, definitely. So I get a little bit, a little bit of chocolate, mm -hmm. a little bit of grape, mm -hmm. a little chocolate, bit. Chocolate, grapes, chocolate-covered yeah. grapes. Who doesn't love that? That's I, I do. That. It's, like a, <laughs> it's an average thing. Ch chocolate-covered raisins, um, yeah. different, which is a dry Chocolate-covered dehydrated grapes, yes. Mm -hmm. Um. A little bit of spice, maybe a little bit of cardamom. Ooh. A little bit of cinnamon. I'm getting yes. some umami on it. Some umami. <laughs> Edamame. <laughs> uh, it's a joke. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, it's nut overly sweet. It, what did you say? It's nut overly sweet? You're getting a little nut? No. I'm getting peanut on it for sure. I don't get too much peanut. I, but that's just me. I don't. I'm not picking that up. I kind of get well, that chocolate covered raisins. I'm kind of, okay. I'm kind of on board there. So I had milk chocolate for sure as one of my milk. smelling notes. I had cherry mm -hmm. cola on the nose, but maybe that's the fruitiness that I'm getting with with the grapey. Um, yeah, could be like a getting, black cherry kind of thing. Uh, ooh, there you go, black cherry, little IBC, uh, black cherry soda uh, plug. We, I got. Oh, go ahead. Can, can we give a thumbs up or thumbs down to stuff that's like flavored like black cherry? Is that kind of an old? Like I like black cherry. Black cherry. Black cherry ice cream. Yeah, black cherry is great. Oh, now, is, black is cherry black, ice cream? Is no. black cherry a natural okay, designation of cherry, though? Yes, yes. For okay. Sure. There's so like you can get like cherry. Just a cherry. Black no, but cherry can cold. you get like a black cherry like in a supermarket? Like just yeah, a dark cherry. cherry. Yeah, 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 dark cherries with pits in them, I think. Okay. Yeah, they're great. Is this different than a normal cherry? Yes. Okay. All right. We're good. Want us to keep going, TJ? Is that what the, the finger means? Just to keep talking? Uh, we're just going to keep uh, jacking. <laughs> All right, so I got uh, very similar nosy notes as Ben. So you're not getting the the nuttiness. I'm getting a little bit of that, but like it's kind of a little funky peanut, which I think has to do with the age, but not a ton. Uh, we know I, I'm not a huge peanut fan on the nose, but I'm also getting stewed apples. I'm getting like a caramelized like brown sugar a little bit, a little bit of honey as well. The cinnamon call, Ben, I agree with totally. So uh, there's a fair amount going on the nose here at, at $45, I think. This is a pretty, pretty... Um, Fairly complex nose, I would say. I'd say the nose almost resembles a finished nose. I'd say it's an elite nose. Really? I'm picking up a lot of what elite you guys are putting. Elite nose. Wow. I mean, elite for us is a 1.75 because nobody's ever given a nose a two, like we've talked about. Yeah. But uh, it's you know we're not rating it just yet. But it, it's it's a it's a 1.5 or above for it, me. I'll have well, to get it's, there. It, it's a good nose. We agree. All right, taste. Taste is out of well. We're not going out of points yet. So taste. What are you guys getting on the taste? 
Mm. Bourbon. I get the cherry. Out. Yeah, I get the cherry. So it, it's <laughs> velvety. The, the, the mouth feel is nice. It's very smooth. Uh, but but in a, yes, it's like a coating. Uh, it's like a it's, it's like a nice. Whoa, whoa. It is. Um, it it's like a nice blanket when it's cold outside. A nice soft blanket, and it covers you up nice and warm. And you're just like ah, uh, I'm cozy now. And it's like that in my mouth. It's a cozy mouth. Uh, cherry cola though is what I'm what I'm getting on the flavor. Um, little vanilla, mm. roasted uh, some kind of roasted nut. It's not peanut, like a cinnamon sugar roasted almonds maybe that you get like at sporting events. Mm. Hot nuts in your mouth. Mm. Thick. I don't. So to me, it, there was a lot more sweet notes on the nose than there was in the taste. Like to me, it's almost like a like a good kind of bitter, like a like a black tea. Ooh. Or I mean, definitely packs a. I mean, like it's not hard to it's drink, not, but the one eleven like definitely hits you. Like it shows yeah. up there. Ooh, and like I, you said, younger younger age on this, right? At least two years, so they're not claiming that it's any older. It's probably not a four to six year whiskey, and so it's not as smooth as it might be a little older. But not in a bad way. Like it's not like I wouldn't say it's terribly rough around the edges. But the one eleven definitely helps. Yeah. Just smacks yeah. you a little bit. I don't feel a whole lot of like. I mean, f hearing that it's younger makes sense to me. I'm not getting a whole lot of like vanilla or oak characteristics. Yeah. Would like that's not there. And I think that's like I said, it's more, it's more what I'm picking up is like the a bitter kind of not, but not an unpleasant bitter. I like you know things that are bitter. So like to me, like it's, it's like an unsweetened tea. Sorry, um, you're getting citrus at all. Like I, I I wasn't getting or like an orangey kind of vibe, and then I kind of burped a little bit, and then it tasted I can like see, orange. I can see, uh, yeah, I'm making a comeback. Like a bitter orange or a bitter lemon. Mm. Yeah, it is very complex. I'm gonna say this: like, there's a lot going on here. That I, it's listed as a bourbon. It doesn't taste like what you would think a traditional bourbon is. Like, if you're trying to tell someone, hey, get in a bourbon and start with this, like, this wouldn't be what you'd want to start them with because it yeah. is ben not would put a this thing. in a smarter pack. Yeah. Guaranteed he'd put it in a starter pack. Ben would, yeah, and then he would get no votes. But if he put it in his expert pack, you know, some, this I'm missing look. sweetness. That's the only thing that, that I'm not picking up. I just, um, I'm getting sweet. I'm getting I a get cherry sweet by a, Yeah, I get a sweet because nosing, no, you know, the smell is so much a part of how you taste things. And so the sweetness on the nose, I, I definitely get a no, sweet. The, the nose is, is very sweet. The nose right. is very sweet. But it carries over to me. Oh, okay. Interesting. And, and I will say, I will, Ben, that the nose indicates a lot more sweetness than what you get on the palate. Yeah. The palate's a little more complex, uh, a little bit more. Uh, like, there's just depth and heft yeah. to it, and it's tough to like pick out a ton of flavors. The sweetness hits me right in the front of it uh -huh. and then leaves pretty quickly. So, so if you don't pick it up right on the front, I think the sweetness is gone pretty quick. Oh, at, yeah. at, as we get to the finish here, I, I, I agree with you, TJ. Like I get the sweet right away, and, and it ends with a lot of peppery and baking spice. It's a good mm -hmm. burn. It's almost got like this carbonated, like I wanted to say cherry cola at first, but I already did that for the nose, and, the and it wasn't a cherry cola finish. almost like a Sprite. Like I get that little cit citrusy Ooh, zestiness. burn. Uh, almost like it. a 7-Up. Yeah. Not as yes. smooth as a Sprite. Ooh, there you go. There you go. Like more soapy. than Hell yeah. 7-Up like was more soapy than Sprite. 7-Up is soapy. soapy? Soapy. What is it, like carbonated I think, cilantro? I, I think someone spiked your uh, your 7-Up as a kid, TJ. Yeah, so probably my parents. Um, So, yeah, I agree with the finish on that. Definitely more spicy. Packs a little bit more of a punch. Ben always talks about like a bourbon that – or a, a whiskey or drink or whatever. Fights that, you fights him this fights you a little bit at the finish um mm -hmm. yeah uh, good, ben's you know, strugg struggling with the and no it's aren't a, you ben yeah in a good way but also like uh you can tell that it's only age two years kind of yeah. way right like so uh, yeah. i don't know there's a good fight and then there's a you know there's a good fight a good mm -hmm. clean fight and then there's like a homeless man in an alley fight right like it's fighting you but it's you know yeah, it's, hope, it's homeless it. man. Yeah, I, can't, I, I can't even go with that. I'm just gonna get in trouble. You know, there's fighting. You know, it's, yeah. it's bum fight Mike in Tyson, a glass. and then there's you know a fight because you're, yeah. So anyway, tougher fight there. Yeah. Um, thoughts my, on the finish, uh, Ben? Uh, my uncle's rated. homeless, so I can make jokes about it. Don't come at me, anyone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the. Uh, I'm enjoying the bitterness. I, I I feel like it's a little bit. 
younger, but when when I taste a lot of like young uh, whiskey, I interpret that as like very acidic, mm -hmm. um, like sour notes. And I'm not getting that here. Um, and so when I say bitter, it's not out of a like dislike for it. Um, it's like a bitter of like an IPA, you know, that kind of not grapefruit in nature, but just, oh, that's kind of refreshing. And so when I'll, I'll drink it, mouthfeel is great. Finish oh, wow, is, mouthfeel. you know, fights you a little bit. And then it's like, okay, have another sip because it was a little bit bitter. Palate cleanse, time to have another sip, right? It's not, I'm not being overwhelmed. My palate is not overwhelmed by the finish where I'm like, ooh, you know, stay away kind of thing. I got to say real quick, uh, this is what I drank on the the previous episode with Pat, the Chattanooga Whiskey single barrel store pick is at 118. It's aged at least three years, so a little bit more proof. And obviously single barrels, so they're picking it out of different places. But similar mash bill, I think the exact same. Um, but greater than three years, the extra year of aging turns it much more bourbony. It's awesome. Uh, I love this. I'm trying to milk it and go as slowly as possible on it. But I have since. Is there even a nipple on that? How can you milk that? You can milk anything with a nipple. Milk, milk me, Greg. Let's roll. Let's let's roll with this rating. Let's, <laughs> yeah. so let's roll this. Easy for you to say. Oh my god! I'm hammered. I've had quarter of an ounce. Um, <laughs> you get two points for the nose. Mm -hmm. I, I'll start off. I never start off. Um, I ever like this nose a lot. I'm really between a one five and a one seven five. Um, go with your heart. Go with your heart. Listen to your heart. My heart's stupid. So. We don't get. Copyright flagged. I'm Keep sure going, that that's fair use. There's no way that I think that's unfair use for my ears. <laughs> um, 175. Wow. 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 All right. Can I go? Homer. Yeah, go, Brendan. Oh, 1.5. I thought it was a very nice nose. Uh, certainly well above average. There's a ton going on at the nose. It's still a little young. I don't love the peanut buttery kind of nuttiness note that I'm getting. But other than that, it's it's nice. It's unique. There's a lot going on. Uh, yeah, one one point five strong nose for me, Ben Benethy. Hmm. Don't feel I'm between pressured. one and a quarter and one and a half here. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'll, I'll go one and a quarter. I think it's mm, no one and a half. Is, I guess yeah, I'm one, one and a half. Let's go that. Ben, keep it for taste. You get four points. Ooh. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go two and a quarter here. I think two and a quarter. It's it's slightly above average. Nothing to write home about, but not unappealing. Brendan? I went with 2.75. Uh, this had a little, uh, again, funky, a little different. We, we really struggled to, to identify other than a few key characteristics, but it was enjoyable. Um, just for that reason, couldn't say it's a, a great flavor profile, but, but good and, and very unique. Very, very unique. And I give Chattanooga whiskey credit for that. And that's not because they're on our podcast. It's because it's actually legitimately very good and, and different. I'll split you guys in the middle. I'll go 2.5. I think there's some good things about it. It's above average, but it's not like overwhelmingly above average by any means. What I do like and just letting this op open up a little bit is I'll snake it back. You guys' way. Snake I'm going to give this a one on the finish. I think some good notes kind of come out with it. I kind of joked about it being a homeless fight, but in letting it open up a little bit and trying it again, I think the uh, the taste is above average, but somewhat underwhelms. But I think the finish brings a lot with it at the end. Mm -hmm. So give it the full one there, Brendan. Uh, man, I was between 0.75 and and one. I gave Blanton's a one, and this is different than Blanton's, but still really damn good. I feel like 0.75 is selling it too low. I think this is a great finish. Um, one for me. How'd you know I was going to put down one? How dare you? I could tell. Oh. I read a lot of your articles, so I could tell which way you were leading with that. Um, so, um, yeah, no, it's not. I wouldn't say it's a perfect finish, but I, I'd say it's closer to one than, than yeah. 0.75. That's where so I'm that's at. Why with I, it. You know, it's like a point. 0.87. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Let's just see no. what happens with the composite with no. that kind of. <laughs> not doing it. Ben. You get one point for finish here. 0. 0.75. 0.75. <laughs> I think you guys are leaning too hard into the one territory, but it's good. We, we, um, did, go, we, we did go one back-to-back -back weeks. I know, yeah, man. Ben went 0. 0.75 yeah. in back-to-back -back weeks because... Yeah. Was I? Man, okay. Hmm. Okay, 0. 0.5. <laughs> 0. 0.5. Contrarian. 
Cohesiveness and complexity. Ben, you can go first here. You get a point total. Definitely complex. Um, it loses it a little bit in cohesive, cohesivity for me. Um, so, 0.5. Brendan. Uh, I think, so I agree with Ben in that it's super complex. It does lose a, a little bit on co cohesivity. What did he say? Cohesivity. 111. It loses a little bit on it, but there are still similar elements. I get the cherry cola all the way through. That carbonated kind of vibe goes all the way through. The nuttiness, uh, spicy does. So I'm going to go 0.75. I can't completely like take a point off for uh, for cohesiveness, but it's not fully cohesive. TJ? Yeah, Brennan hit it on the dot. There, There is some cohesion here. And, you know, from, from the nose, the cherry that we talked about, the spice on the nose all the way to the finish. Um I, I'll give it the 0.75. Definitely complex as well. Um, scores going into value out of eight here. Um, wow. Brendan and myself got there different ways, but came up with a six out of eight. Ooh. That's pretty dang good. Yeah, um, that's great. Reminder going into value last week, Ben had a six. I had a 5.75 and Brendan had a 5.25. Um, ben with a 4.75 out of eight. He didn't want like this as much as we did uh value we talked about is a uh, mixture of availability price proof mm -hmm. and then other factors that you may fit factor in yourself um so we are out of two points looking at value here uh ben you had the low score so you can start uh with value it's a 45 dollar bottle fairly available not incredibly difficult to find right um at 111 proof you gave it a slightly above score uh, above average score at 4.75 out of 8. What's your value? I think I'm slightly above average here on value. Um, I like the idea that I'm getting a lot of proof for uh, for 45 bones. Uh, Rare Breed is same price. I think that's a better bottle overall than this. Um, but there's not a whole lot of other bottles at 45 bucks that kind of swing at that, that proof weight to me. Um, what's hitting it against what's hitting it on points for me is that this isn't gonna this is not gonna appeal to everybody because it's kind of a departure from your typical like bourbon you know lane so i'm probably gonna go 1.25 1.25 brendan you and i both give this a six i'll let you go first yeah. and i'll finish it off but tell me about your value here i was going through and trying to look at some other scores and see what we did with with value for something that was in the six range this is available. It's unique. Mm -hmm. The bottle is pretty cool and unique to it. I like the true legit cork there. Uh, it's kind of got an old school vibe. I love how transparent they are on their label. I love how this whiskey line is being transparent with stuff. I know that's not going into what this actual is in this bottle. This is really good stuff. Like Ben said, at the proof, uh, especially at the age, um, it's amazing what they get out of it. And again, available, fairly affordable at 45 bucks. I'm going to go 1.75 on value. I think it's really, really great value. You're going to be unique, high quality, um, and, and accessible and high proof. So it checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, I, I, I as well look back at some, some different things and, um, I looked at Sazerac, which is very different than this, but mm -hmm. something that's not incredibly easy to find. And I gave that a 6.25 going into value. Uh, and then I gave that a 1.75 for value. And so I'm getting something that's 21 proof higher. I'm getting something that's much more available. And it's something that is pretty unique. And so for that, I got to agree with Brendan here. I, I'm not going to mm. give it the full two. But if I am just kind of consistent with how I'm figuring the other things that we've rated, it's a great proof. It's a great uh, availability. Um, so I'm going to give it a pretty above average uh, value wow. score there. So 175 for me, bringing our total scores. Oh. Ben with a six. Oh, man. I'm Brendan and myself it. with a 7.75. Our composite on that is a 7.16 repeating. So we'll call it 7.2. It doesn't make the board, does it, Brendan? It's close, just, though. Just if Ben wasn't it. such a hater, it'd yeah. be there. But 
but that's why yeah. we do the composite is to get different opinions yeah. and different yeah. thoughts on it. Like and, you it. know, we're, we're biased. We, we love what they do. Pat joined us, which we appreciate, but you know, we, yeah. we didn't, we didn't love three chords and we didn't gas it up. So like, you know, we're, we're going to be fair with it. I, I really love what Chattanooga whiskey is doing. This is a really damn good bottle. Um, but Ben, thank you for keeping us down to earth a little bit, I guess. I think, I think the quality of product is not under, is not under consideration here. Like or that's not under attack. Like they put out a great product. My only concern yeah, is that sponsorship, Brendan. Yeah. I'm just yeah, saying, ben. yeah, <laughs> like they're, they're, they're putting out solid bottles. I just think it's not in the middle of the lane as far as like bourbon is concerned. And so it may not be perfect for everybody. That's I can see only, that. That's my only kind of critique. And, 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 it, and that's not the goal. The goal is not always to be down the middle, you know, you know, Buffalo trace kind of thing. Right. Um, but it's just something to consider when you're when you're mm-hmm. looking at it. I would recommend this to somebody who's had like four or five bottles mm-hmm. and that want to diversify their profile of bourbons. Yep, that makes sense. And I, I think again, where we go with the composite, that's why we do it. Different opinions, different things that we're all valuing. And I think seven point one does indicate I mean, anything above a seven for us, like Buffalo Trace is below a seven, Elijah Craig is below a seven. Like, like it's not easy to get a seven on our score. That indicates yeah. uh a really, really damn good value and something you should definitely consider having in your collection at all times. So I think that speaks yeah. highly of, of this product. Very unique. Um, I'm glad we tried it. Uh, Brendan, I'd love it if you sent me more of it. So thank you very much for uh, supplying. Actually, shout out my guy, Sean. Sean, Sean thank you for this uh, for this review. We finally did it. You sent it to us a long time ago. Thank you for sending this uh, and Sean's sample that he way. sent to me made it to Ben and I bought my own bottle because I you know because hey, uh, you're rich as hell like we know why bro you ain't gotta flex on us like that yeah Brandon stop flashing your money around gosh don't you hate people like that I'm also uh, still bigger before COVID now that all right go back it. and listen to since Brendan's touching himself now on his arm um go back and listen to Tuesday's episode where we talk more about Chattanooga whiskey Interact with us on social media, Bourbon on a Budget. Subscribe on YouTube if you're watching, listen to this. If you're listening, hundreds of you a week, go li- listen. Go subscribe on YouTube. We'd love to up that following. Yes, we want to do more with video. Go check that out. Bourbon on a Budget. Smash Help subscribe. Help us grow that uh, following. As Brendan says, smash subscribe. Smash some bourbon. And sm- well, well, we'll cut it off there. Smash anything else. Uh, whoa, we will see you guys next week where we go live. On Twitter, Monday Facebook, night. and YouTube. We'll be live next Monday night. Interact with us live on the main show. Join and us, baby. Talk to you then. Shout Until out. next time, cheers. Cheers.